And welcome back, folks, and thanks for staying tuned into the Solano College Sports Network. We're here on game two of the doubleheader between the Solano Falcons and the Yuba 49ers. First pitch to Amy Nichols is called a ball, so count goes to one and no. I'm Stosh Morning. Joining the booth with me now is Mr. Anthony. Anthony, how you doing today? I'm doing good, Stosh. How are you? I'm doing excellent. You know, game two here. Solano won the first one, 11 to three. This pitch has popped straight up, so count goes to one and one. Now, you've been working a camera the first game, so tell us what your thoughts were from being out in the field. Well, I've seen a lot of good ball play, a lot of good defense by Solano. Um, they were very good in, um, on the bats, and Andre Nae White, she had a terrific game, and I'm looking forward to seeing another good game. All right, that's awesome. That strike is in there. Count goes to one and two, and it is Alicia Selden on the mound, like I said, for the Falcons to game two. She has Amy Nichols in a 1-2 count. That pitch is outside. Count goes to 2-2. Two and two. Selden comes into this game with a 10-2 and two overall record with one save, three complete games, 59 and two-thirds innings pitched with a 3.40 ERA. So, so we saw a good pitching game from Denali Smith. Let's see if Selden can back it up here. This one's fouled back, so we'll stay at 2-2. Two and two. So now Solano is on top of the BVC with a 9-0 record with a 17-game winning streak. Looking to go for number 18 here today. 17 games, that's tremendous right there. A swing and a miss, strike three calls. So that's the way this ball game starts. A good strike out there from Alicia Selden. Now it's going to bring up Shan Parrish, who went two for three in the last game with a couple of singles, a scored run. So she's swinging the bat well. First pitch inside, ball one. So a couple defensive substitutions for Solano compared to the first game. We have Ali Ashley Dufresne behind the plate. Jade Bactad over at first. Brittany Jacobson at second. This one's poked out in the center field. Nay White is under it. It makes the grab for out number one. Good. Two. Sorry. Good, Good defense by Andre Nay White. Yeah. Nay White had an outstanding game in game one. I know you were talking about her earlier, Anthony. So now it's going to be up Han Hannah Heitman. Short stop. One for three in game one with a single and a scored run. Inside, ball one. So infield all straight away. Two outs here in the top of the first inning. That pitch on the outside corner called. The count goes to one and one. Now, this is your first game in the booth for a softball game. Anthony, you excited for today's game? Yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> Finally get you in the booth. You know he does one of our best cameramen here at the Solano College Sports Network. That pitch just a bit low. Count goes to one. So as I was saying, Brittany Jacobs second. Second, Atlanta Benapio at short. Jasmine Hornsby Edwards at third. Kristen Montgomery. Or Christian, I'm a, Christian Montgomery, I'm sorry, out in left field. Nay White in center and Christian Bayardo over in right. This one's poked right up the middle, so Heitman has the first hit of the ball game. That was a shot going towards um, center field. Yeah, she really just waited on that pitch and knows the outside corner just went with it. So a good piece of hitting there by Hannah Heitman. Now it brings up Haley Gall. Gall went 0 for 3 in the first game with a couple of strikeouts. This one's popped up down the left field line. Coming over is Montgomery. Montgomery's under it and makes the grab for out number three. So 49ers strand one, heading to the bottom of the first.
Hi, my name is Stephanie Sello. I'm a freshman catcher. Thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. So, bottom of the first inning here at Solano Community College for game two of our doubleheader here on the Solano College Sports Network. And it's leading off for the Solano Falcons to be Elena Benapayo. Elena had a great game in game one. She went two for four with a couple of singles, two scored runs, and a stolen base. So she's looking to continue her hot streak here. Yeah, she's very good at getting on base and getting RBIs for others. So there's a throw down to second base. And what did you see from Alicia Selden in the top of the first inning, pitching-wise, that you liked from Solano so far? Oh, it was very, very consistent. She was in, in the strike zone the whole time. And all you have to do is lead the, lead the batters to get the ground outs and certain, certain pitches that she likes to pitch and just get the outs. Very nice analysis there. My partner over here, Anthony. First pitch of Betty Pyle is in there. Strike call count goes 0-1. On the mound for game two for the Yuba 49ers, Haley Gall. She started out and left the first game, now coming in to pitch. Haley Gall is 1-5 on the year with a 6.89 ERA. This one's hit right back up the middle. Gall trying to field it herself with a lot of speed, and she's just out of first place. So Gall made the play for out number one. That pitch is inside ball one. And this is Christian Montgomery for a first at bat. Christian went two for two with a couple of singles in the first game. Came in as a defensive sub out of Jesse Bethel High School. Looking to drop it down, but it's low. Ball two. So the way the 49ers line up on defense, you got Haley Gall on the mound, Cheyenne Parrish behind the plate, Kelsey Smith down at first, Olivia Manuel at second base, and that count goes 3-0. Shortstop, Hannah Heitman, Elizabeth Bond at third, left field, Amy Nichols, center field, Yasmin Marino, and Danielle Ferrari over in right field. That pitch in there, strike call count goes to three and one. So Christian's going to look here to start, try to get on base, bring up Steph Sello, who's hitting the cover off the ball as of late, Hit, having a couple good at-bats in the first game. Oh, that pitch called on the outside corner, count goes full, three and two. It looked like a ball to me, Stop. <laughs> Well, you know, first inning, got to feel out the umpires. Umpires all have their own zones, so. And they also have a better vantage point than we do, so can't get on too hard. <laughs> so now, payoff pitch from Haley Gall. And that's high, ball four. As they say, Anthony, the ball don't lie. <laughs> so that is a walk for Christian Montgomery. Now it's going to bring up Steph Sello. Sello went two for four with four RBIs, two singles, and an earned run. Oh, it reached on an air, which gave her another RBI. First pitch low, ball one. So now the 1 0 count to Steph Sello. Hi, runner on the move. Close play. And they got her out at second. Good, strong throw from Cheyenne Parrish to get the out at second base. So 
So Christian Montgomery, that's the first time she's been thrown out all year. Now one, two stolen bases, one caught stealing. And it looks like the bag might have come up. So that's always a little dangerous there. Yeah, very dangerous. So the count is 2 and 0. Oh. So it's going to be Steph Sello followed by Nay White. Nay White is the leader in the state of California with a 590 average, and I believe it's going to go up a couple more points, closer to that 600 mark after last game as Nay White went 3 for 3 with two triples. Yeah, that's outstanding, Stash. Very good eye for the ball, and once, once she makes contact, it's over. So now it looks like we're going to resume play now. Count is 2-0 to Steph Sello. We know Steph has some power here. So Haley Gall comes set. Rocks, fires. And that is low, ball three. So three balls, no strikes. You know Sello's going to be waiting for one pitch here and trying to draw the walk. That pitch right down the heart of the plate, strike one. Now in the 3-1 count, Anthony, what are you looking for to, to do with the pitch? Well, it should be a strike or, or right out of the strike zone so she could chase after it, but as you can see, it was very high. <laughs> So back-to-back -back walks, even though they got the Christian Montgomery stealing his second base. Now Steph Sello on with first, and now it's going to bring up Nay White. As we said, who went three for three with a single, two triples, a scored run, and two RBIs in game one. First pitch to Nay. Oh, good pitch on the outside corner. Strike one. One oh chopped right out front, but it's a dead ball. Does it look like it kind of kind of came up? It looked like it almost hit her in the face area. Yeah. So the count zero oh and two to Nay White with a run on her first two outs. Nay White looking to stay hot here. This one's hit high and deep in the center field. That ball's back, 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 and you can kiss that baby goodbye. Two-run home run for Nay White. Have yourself a day, kid. I told you, once she makes contact, it's over. Man, that ball got out of here in a hurry. And a good job by my keys out there not to get out of the way and <laughs> save the camera. <laughs> so that's the way this one starts with a bang. And it looked like Haley Gall might be out of the inning unscathed, but just gave up that... Two-run home run to Nay White. Now it's going to bring up Alicia Selden, today's pitcher. So that's the first time you've been in the booth. You've got to see a home run. How does it feel to be behind the booth over here and not on the camera there, Anthony? It was it was very different <laughs> seeing it from the camera and actually getting to see it live. There you go. Now Alicia Selden coming up to the plate. Count is one and oh. She went two for two with a single and a double, two runs, two RBIs in the first game. And this one's chopped over to Hyde Matter. She throws it over to first for out number three. Solano strikes for two off the two run home run from Nay White, and we're heading to the top of the second.
Hi, my name is Cassidy Paolo, freshman outfielder. Thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. And we're back here in the top of the second inning. Solano once again jumps out to an early lead, two to nothing off a home run, two run home run from Nate White. Now it's going to bring up the five, six, seven hitters for the 49ers. So an early start to this ball game could prove good for the Falcons. Now it brings up Kelsey Smith. Kelsey Smith went one for three with a double in the first game. She played a good defensive game over down at first base. Had a couple hot shots come her way. This one's poked down the left field line foul. So Anthony, this is your third or second semester? Third semester in the Solano College Sports Network class? Um, Comp 75? Second. And well, how do you like it so far? It's great. <laughs> I, lo I love the experience. We have a great teacher, and there's great students who join the class. And I think everybody should at least try this once. <laughs> Popped up towards the third base. Going over. Jasmine Hornsby Edwards makes the grab for out number one. Now it's going to bring up Danielle Ferrari. Danielle went 0 for 2 with a walk in the first game. Now here comes the first pitch to Danielle Ferrari. Fouls it back, strike one. Ferrari made the switch from second base and now out playing right field today for the 49ers in game two. So Selden hops out to a quick 0-1 count. Once again, fouls this back 0-2. Alicia's been really stepping up her game so far. Pitching well for the Falcons is 4-0 and in conference play with a 2.3 ERA and averages almost 4.5 strikeouts per game. So right here is a strikeout situation, 0-2 count. This one's popped up, comes back, hits the fence. Don't flinch, Anthony. I'll try not to. <laughs> So set it up again, 0-2. Pop up, coming back. Just hits off the top of the fence. But Dufresne makes a catch, even though it's dead ball once it touches the fence. Otherwise, that'd be an out. So set it up and do it again, 0-2. So Selden with 14 strikeouts during conference play. 32 on the year. Swing, miss, tipped it. Grab by Dufresne, strike three. So strike got number 15 in conference play for Alicia Selden. Now it brings up Elizabeth Bond. First pitch in there, strike call. Count goes 0-1. Bond went two for three with a couple of singles in the first game, so she's swinging the bat well today. Foul tip. Count goes 0-2. Oh so Alicia's doing a good job just coming in, throwing strikes. Outside, ball one. Now, for Anthony, for people who want to come take this class, tell a little bit about your camera work and what you've learned from Calm 75. 
Well, when I first entered the class, I was pretty nervous. Like, I'm pretty sure everybody was nervous. But once I learned the camera stuff, that's like the easiest thing to learn to me. And then once you learn the camera, then you can learn the tri the TriCaster and all the electronics and how everything works. It's just easier that way. Next one's hit right up the middle outside of Jacobson gets by her. So that is a two out single for Elizabeth Bond as she continues her good hitting day. So now it's going to bring up Olivia Manuel. Manuel. Olivia went 0 for 1. And on uh, her second at bat, it was an obstruction call, so didn't really get caught. A ground ball to Jacobson, picks it up, throws it over to first for out number three. So the 49ers strand one, heading to the bottom of the second. Bottom of the second inning, six, seven, eight hitters due up for the Solano Falcons, who have a two to nothing lead over the Yuba 49ers in game two of this doubleheader. So here comes the first pitch to Brittany Jacobson. It's low in the dirt, ball one. Brittany Jacobson went 0 for 2 with a walk and two, reached on two errors and scored a run. So she's hitting the ball well. It just happens to be at people. I know she had a, a couple hot shots at a shortstop. And a deep fly ball down left field line. Drops it down. It's a good bump. It rolls foul. So the count goes at one and one. Jacobson's batting a 422 on the year with a 556 average year in conference play. Jacobson leads the team with 37 RBIs. This one's chopped foul. Again, count goes to one and two. So she is the, le the team leader in RBIs and is fifth, rated fifth in the state of California with those 37 RBIs. This Solano Falcon team has just been hitting like mad women out there <laughs> throughout this whole season. First and top five in a eight different categories for hitting. Yes, they're all excellent hitters out there. And there's a strike three call. Got her looking. So the first strikeout of the day for Haley Gall. Now it's going to bring up Jade Backtad. Jade went 0 for 0 in the first game with a couple of walks. But during conference play, she's batting a 471 with a 4, 5, 6, 591 on base percentage. So she gets on a lot. First pitch in there, strike call on the outside corner, 0-1. Back tad now has five walks during conference play. That puts eight on the year for her. High and tight call, strike count goes to 0-2. That was a nice pitch right on the inside. So Haley Gall starting to feel it here in the second inning. 0-2 count to Jade Backtad. Swing and a miss, strike three. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Haley Gall. 
Now coming to the play is Ashley Dufresne. And Ashley went one for two with two sacrifice flies and three RBIs. She had the hit to make it an eight-run rule to end the game in the sixth inning, game one. And that plunked her right in the front leg, right in the thigh. So she's on base. Yeah, those, those ball to the thighs, they really hurt. Yeah, never, that never feels good. Nah. You know, as I say, don't rub it. <laughs> She does a good job. She's out there. She's pumped up. She's over here yelling in her dugout, having a good time, <laughs> flexing the muscles. <laughs> now it brings up Jasmine Hornsby Edwards, who went one for three in the first game with a single and a scored run. First pitch in there, strike call. Count goes to 0-1. Ashley does not have a stolen base on the year. Hi, ball one. Count now one and one. Now, Anthony, what's your prediction? What's going to happen right here? Um, I think it's going to be a strike. This one's hit right in the three and a half hole. Oh, and Ferrari just falls down. The frame safe at second. Jasmine Hornsby Edwards continues a good hitting day. With a two-out single, now it's going to bring up the reigning Northern California Player of the Year, Elena Benampayo. She grounded out to the pitcher in her first at-bat. Looking for her first hit of this ball game, boasting a 478 average, 517 in conference play. High ball one. You were right on the strike there, calling it, by the way, Anthony. <laughs> Just happened to be hit. So, you know, Solano already up two to nothing here. He saw Solano really jump ahead quickly the first two innings of game one. And that's high, ball two. Solano put up eight runs in the first two innings and really set the tone for the rest of the ball game. Really shows that Solano is on a 17-game win streak now, 9-0 conference play, 21-6 and overall. Well, when you have great hitters like Solano does, then you really can't be surprised. Ball's in the dirt. Nobody going. Ashley thinking about it. She got caught out hanging, and she is out at third. So that's the way the inning ends. Caught stealing. So Solano strands a pair heading to the top of the third. Hey everybody, Stosh Morty here with the Solano College Sports Network where I've had the privilege of being your sports play-by-play -play and broadcaster for the past couple years at Solano. And you know, it wasn't until Solano, until I came to Solano Community College where I actually found a new passion and a career path when I stumbled upon COM 75, Professor Greg Poff's class. I bounced around out of high school, I had a couple different odd jobs here and there and didn't really have a career path until I stumbled upon this class and ever since then I found there's actually a career path in sports broadcasting, not just by being a broadcaster working in front of the camera but also working behind the scenes with our TriCaster systems doing directing and producing and also working behind a camera. This has been a great experience for me, I found me a career path which I was lost and now I am found and it all thanks to COM75 and here at the Solano College Sports Network. Top of the third inning, Solano still leads two to nothing with a 9-1-2 hitters coming up for the Yuba 49ers. With Yasmin Marino coming up first. Yasmin 0 for 2 with a strikeout looking in the first game. First pitch. Misses the bunt. That is a strike one. Yes, she did go around. So now the count 0 and 1. Drops it down, rolls foul. Strike two. So now quick 0 2 count to Yasmin Marino. So you know we are in March here with the next six games for Solano. They're playing. Doubleheader, one against San Jose and one against Alone College here at Solano College. And they'll go on the road to play Mendocino for a two-game set. 
followed by a big two-game set at here against Napa College. Napa being in the second place, and you know, this is getting ready to end March, and while we're speaking about March, how about March Madness, Anthony? How's your bracket doing, bud? My bracket is horrible right now. Do you still have your final four left in there? Um, I think so. Swing, chop, foul count stays at 0-2. Now, who'd you pick in your final four? Um, I think I picked Kentucky, Arizona, um... Uh, I can't really remember. It's, it's just that bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. I have three of my four left. After Virginia lost, I had them as one of my final four. But ball is low. Count goes to one and two. I had actually Kentucky, Arizona, Virginia, and my Duke Blue Devils, man. Can't ride them out. Oh, yeah, I had Duke too. But I can't I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I think Gonzaga. That's who my other four but was. But Kentucky, they're just too good. I really feel they're going to run the table this year. Go to that perfect 40-0. Yes, Strike three sure. called on the outside corner. Cotter looking for out number one. So now it's going to go back to the top of the lineup. Amy Nichols up at the plate now. 0 for 1 today with the strikeout. Alicia Selden is out here dealing right now in the top of the third. Already had recorded three strikeouts so far. Chop foul count goes 0 1. And what has been your favorite game so far in the tournament that you actually got to watch? Uh, I really haven't got to watch any of them, but uh, my favorite game, well, my favorite story actually is um, Georgia State winning and having the coach's son hit the game winner to move them to the next round. I think that was a beautiful story. Ball outside count goes 1 1. You're absolutely right because I actually got to sit down and watch that game. <laughs> And I'm sitting there, you know, they played Baylor, right? Yeah. Yes. I remember I had Baylor winning, but right before the game, I heard the story about father and son. I'm sitting there like, you know what? I, I'm going to root for Georgia State. Strike on the swing. Count goes to one or two. And I just felt, you know, Baylor's up 10. They start sitting on the ball with four minutes left to play. I'm like, all right, Georgia State's definitely winning this game. And when that kid, R.J. Hunter, threw up that shot, I'm like, what are you doing? And he made it. I jumped out of my seat. And my, <laughs> I spilled my chips everywhere. Foul back. Don't flinch, bud. I saw you getting out of the way back here. <laughs> Can't help it. Yeah, I, I spilled my chips, and I was going crazy. <laughs> I even had to record it back a couple times. You know, I had a Snapchat <laughs> video, Instagram. I had to send it out to everybody that was that was out working. You know, it's happened to be in between classes, so I got lucky there. <laughs> Outside, ball two. Good waist pitch there by Alicia Selden. Close around the plate. Count goes to two and two. And they're talking about the R.J. Hunter kid actually going – High in the draft this year. Yes, he's he's an excellent scorer. I really like him. He has a good height and scoring ability to be a a good um, shooting guard in the NBA. You know, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Clay Thompson. A little bit. I, I could see the resemblance there when I was watching. They they kind of have the same scoring proficiency. This one's popped up out of play. Going to go over the visitor dugout, so he'll stay at three and two with one out. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see the final final four when it gets down to it. If Kentucky can stay perfect or if Arizona can upset them in the final four if they make it that far. Of course, they've got to go through Wisconsin, who's playing great basketball right now as well. That ball is in the dirt. Ball four. I think out of everybody, I think Arizona has the best chance to upset Kentucky. But if Arizona doesn't do it, then nobody else has a chance. You don't think Duke can? No. Too tall. They, they'll, they'll shut down Oka for it, won't they? Yes. And Willie um, Cauley Stein is a beast. Jaleel Okafor has been a beast also. How about Coach K getting on and missing that reverse dunk? <laughs> that was the best thing I've seen all tournament. Besides RJ Hunter, three, of course. Yeah. This is chop foul. Oh, one. Kick goes to count to Cheyenne Parrish, who's 0 for 1 here in game two. Bear swinging around, Mump pulls it back, drops it down again, and it just pushes it foul. Count goes 0 and 2. Jasmine Hornsby Edwards was right down the line waiting for it. If it would have stayed fair, might have been a double play. Yeah. 
So now no balls, two strikes. Selden way out ahead of right now. Has a lot of pitches she can work with. This thing's popped up. Back near the home dugout. Bounces off the fence. And you see Steph Sello behind the plate as Coach Terry Pearson Boone made a switch during the inning. Switching out Dufresne for Sello. So once again, no balls, two strikes, one out. This one's hit right back up the middle. And Nichols is on her horse, going to go to third. And she's going to be waved home. She's going to score easily. So one out, double RBI for Cheyenne Parrish. Well, I don't know if you've seen it, but the, uh, the girl at second base actually did a split to stop herself from <laughs> going to third base. <laughs> so good. She just <laughs> overran the bag and did a split. Yeah. So now it's two to one in favor of Solano. And the 49ers have something working here with their three hitter, Hannah Heitman, up at the plate, shortstop. Heitman, one for three in the first game, as we said. One for one in this game. That first pitch is a strike. She had a single back in the first inning, so she's seen the ball well off Selden. And you know she like to get a base hit here and get one more in and try to tie this ball game up at two. Swing and a miss, strike two. She was swinging for the fences on that one. Yeah, she tried to kill that one. I think her head was looking at the scoreboard by the time her bat came <laughs> through. So now the 0-2. <laughs> Popped up over our heads out of play. Count stays at 0-2. So also in March, not just NCAA basketball, but it's coming down to the end of the NBA season. Of course, the Golden State Warriors doing work. Hi, ball one. Yeah. Who do you have going to the NBA Finals? I have Cleveland and the Dubs, and it's going seven games. I'm not predicting a winner, just seven games. <laughs> what about you, bud? Mm, I actually predict the same thing, but I have it going to, to six games. This one's hit right out front, and she boots it. Selden can't make the play, so everybody is safe. And, you know, that tough spin right in the dirt is always hard to make the play. But now Solano's in a little bit of trouble now with Haley Gall coming up to the plate. 0 for 1 so far in this ballgame. So the double play situation is in, in, intact. But Heitman does have three stolen bases on the gear. Has not been caught stealing yet, but we know Steph Sello has a good arm behind the dish. First pitch, she thought about it, did not go, so the count goes to 1-0. Oh. Now this is a little bit of a tricky situation here. Do you trade the out for the run? Do you try to hold the run? This one's ripped right past Elena Benapayo. So one run will come in, and Gall comes up big and helps herself out by tying this game up at two. So the 49ers starting to show some Ferociousness out of their dugout here with one out first and second. Good time to rally for this team. Kelsey Smith at the plate. She flew out to the third baseman in foul territory in her first at bat. Trying to drop it down, and she does. Hornsby Edwards feels it, throws it over to first for out number two. That was a nice play on the ball by Hornsby Edwards right there. Yeah, she got to the ball quickly and made the throw, and Good job by Brittany Jacobson, the second baseman, by realizing the first baseman's crashing, going over to first base, covering the position. But now it brings up Danielle Ferrari, 0 for 1 today, struck out in her first at-bat in the second inning. First pitch in there, strike call, count goes to 0-1. So 
So now the 0-1. This one's popped up. Bounces off the fence. So now the count goes to 0-2. So this is the situation you need here. Seldon needs to get a strikeout, get out of this inning. Two outs. Low and in the dirt. Good block by Cello. Count goes to one and two. Yeah, next six games for Yuba. They got a couple, two games set against Mendocino, followed by a road trip, two games at Napa, and they end up on April 2nd against Contra Costa. Hi, ball two. Like we said, Napa in second place in the BVC. Yuba right on their hill, heels, third place. And then Contra Costa's all the way down at the bottom of that with 0-20 on the season, 0-10 in conference, still looking for that el elusive first win. This one's poked up in the shallow left field. Could be trouble. Better pile going back. She makes the grab for out number three. So the Yuba 49ers get two, and you're heading to the top, bottom of the third. My name is Cassidy Paolo, freshman outfielder. Thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. And welcome back to the Solano College Sports Network where we're all tied at two. The Yuba 49ers got two back in the top of the third. Now in the bottom, Solano has a one, two, three hitters coming up. Starting with Atlanta Benepio, who was up at the plate when Ashley Dufresne got caught in between second and third to end that inning. It's so a little benefit there, you know, you end the inning up, saw a couple pitches, now you get a fresh count to see. And this will be technically like a third at bat. But she's 0 for 1 today. Looking for that first hit and staying hot. So the first pitch from Gall. As ball is in the dirt, count goes to 1-0. Another 1 0 count to Atlanta Benepio. And dirt again coming right at me. 2 0. Think she's a little mad at me or something? She's trying to throw the ball at me? Uh, maybe. I don't know what you did, but I should So now the 2 0. Hi, ball three. So now as a leadoff hitter, 3 L, you really want to get on base any way as possible. More than likely she'll be taking this unless it's right down the heart of the plate. Mm, I think it's going to be a strike. And you are right once again, my friend. So count goes 3-1. and one. Man, you should uh, start making some bets, you know, NCAA tournament. <laughs> Take that luck on that. NBA playoffs. And, hey, Major League Baseball is right around the corner. Time to make those long season bets. I know the Nationals are favored to win this year. Yes, the Nationals pitching pitching rotation is unbelievable right now. 
I just don't think they have it in them. I don't think they have the dog fighting, but we'll see. That's what that's what baseball's for. A lot of good teams, a lot of teams making moves this offseason. The Cubs made a big step up this offseason as well. 3-2, lifted in the left field, and Nichols makes the grab for out number one. So Atlanta just got a little bit under that pitch and left it up for Nichols to go over there and make the play. Now it's going to be with Christian Montgomery. 0 for 0 today. She walked in her first at bat. Also got, also got caught stealing. So now the first pitch to Montgomery. High, ball one. As the game goes on, Gull's starting to fall behind the hitters a little more and more, but working out of the jams, doing an excellent job. This one's chopped foul down the third baseline, so the count goes to one and one. So we had Nationals making moves, the Cubs making moves, the Padres got a little better in the NL West. The Giants lost Pablo Sandoval to the Red Sox and got Casey McGee back instead. A guy who hit his prime back in the 2007 season, so that's an interesting pickup for them. Then once again, the Oakland A's trading away all their all-stars and getting a bunch of no-names. Yeah, I don't know what the Oakland A's were thinking. You know, I like the moves as an A's fan. Swing and a miss, strike two. So now the count goes to one and two. So we had a person in the crowd yelling to take off, thought it was two strikes. One, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. So now, once again, two outs. It brings up Steph Sello. 0 for 0 today. Walked in the first at bat and scored a run. So Steph set the table up for the big home run by Nay White back in the first. First pitch, low and outside, ball one. This one's chopped down third baseline. Kicks foul, so now the count goes one of one. Very similar to the first at bat for Steph Sello. And we know Steph has a lot of power in her bat. First game she hit one out, but it happened to be foul, so it was just a long strike. It was called a strike. Count goes to one and two. So Steph's going to really have to buckle down here, swing at anything close. One, two. She hits this one right up the middle under the glove of Heitman. And Steph Sello has herself a two-out single. What a good job by Steph Sello right there. Going down to get that ball. It was a close, it would have been a close strike call. But just got enough under to get under Heitman. Yes, great focus and concentration by Stephanie. So now it brings up Nay White. One for one today. A couple RBIs off that long home run. So this is the matchup Gall wanted back here. Going right at each other. And Gall actually had Nay White down into an 0-2 count. Do you think she's going to hit another one? She can get a base hit. So they're setting up way outside. Now coming in. And they are going to pitch around Nay White here. It looks like it's going to be an intentional walk. I don't blame them. I would have did the same thing. 
I mean, four for four today, including the last game. One for one in this game, the long home run. Count goes two and zero. Oh. And then she have two triples in the last game. <laughs> Now, wasn't it Ken Griffey Jr. who they were trying to walk, and they kind of, as an intentional walk, kind of floated in the strike zone. He just reached out and poked and hit a home run? Yes, I think so. I know he did. I think Barry Bonds actually did it also. And that is ball four on the intentional walk. So now it's going to be first and second for Alicia Selden. Alicia's batting 533 in conference play. Going back to the last game, two for two, so her average is rising in conference play now and overall. Hi, ball one. It's always a little difficult, you know, when you're throwing an intentional walk. You know, you're used to working it down, trying to hit your spots, and once you kind of start lobbing them in there, it takes a second or two. You really want to come back and start firing strikes, but you saw there a really high pitch. That was where she was hitting her spot before. That ball's inside. Try to back pick. Nay White does not work. So now 2 well. Excellent hitters count here. You look for one pitch, one pitch only. Something you can really drive out into the outfield. Try to get this run home. All knotted up in two, two outs. <coughs> Hi, ball three. You know, in a tie ball game now, you want to get as many runners on as possible. So look for her to take this pitch and not really swing. Ball's in the dirt. It scoots up. It goes, it goes over the catcher's head. That's ball four. So now bases are loaded for Brittany Jacobson, the RBI leader for the Solano Falcon team. So Brittany can add on to her RBI total right here. She has two in scoring position, two outs. She struck out looking at her first at bat on four pitches, so you know she's looking for a little payback here. I think she's going to drive at least two people in today. Well, at this at bat. First pitch of Jacobson in there, strike call. The count goes 0 1. This one's ripped foul down the third base line. So now she finds herself when an 0 2 hole base is loaded. Haley Gall already has a couple strikeouts, three strikeouts on the day so far. A little bit of a jam this inning. She got two quick outs and gave up a single, a walk, and a back-to-back -back walks. One of them was intentional. So the 0-2. This one's ripped out in a deep left center field going back. One hops the wall. One run comes in. Two runs come in. And they are holding... Selden up at third base, and once again, Anthony is right with two runs coming in for the Falcons. They lead 4-2. to two. Man, I'm just great. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a huge hit from Brittany Jacobson. Now once again, two outs, second and third with Jade back to add up. She struck out in her first at bat as well. You know, one swing of the back could really open up this ball game right now. So that puts Jacobson to 39 RBIs on the year. That ball is in the dirt, 1-0. Oh. So the 1-0 oh. from Gall. Outside, ball two. <laughs> yeah, 
I love baseball chants. <laughs> you mean the softball chants over uh, here? Softball, yeah. <laughs> well, what did they just say? Uh, I couldn't really hear it, but I know what's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Strike on the inside corner, too, one. I believe I'll, I'm in love with the Ocho. Yeah, yeah, it sounded like it. But I like when Andre Nake steps up to the plate and they say, nay, 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 nay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got a good voice, Anthony. You should go on American Idol. Uh, no, I'm okay. <laughs> Hi, ball three. So now 3 1 count to Jade Bactad. And Haley Gall is really going to have to buckle down here. Needs to come back and throw a strike. You don't want to load the bases for Ashley to frame. This one's hit right to the second baseman. Manuel, she picks it up, throws it over first, and that's the way the inning ends. Solano strands two, scores two, heading to the top of the fourth. Denali Smith, freshman pitcher. Thanks for watching Solano College Sports Network. Seven, eight, nine hitters due up in the top of the fourth inning for the Yuba 49ers. Solano got two back after the 49ers scored two in the top of the third. So we are at four and two with Elizabeth Bond, Olivia Manuel, and Yasmin Marino coming up. It's important here for Alicia Selden to Coming and put a zero up on the board. Have a shutdown inning. Elizabeth Bond is one for one today with a single back in the second inning. So let's see if she continues her nice hitting day. This one's popped up in the infield. Backtad is under it. Backtad makes the catch for out number one. So now it's going to bring up Olivia Manuel. 0 for 1 today with the ground out to the second baseman. That's a good way to start the inning. One pitch, one out. Foul back. Count goes 0 and 1. So the 0 1. And the dirt ball 1. So another beautiful day here in Fairfield, California at Solano Community College. Been a little overcast, a little sunny. Now as the clouds start to come over a little more, kind of looks like some rain clouds, huh, Anthony? Yeah, a little bit. I thought it was going to rain earlier before the game started, but I'm glad it didn't. Yeah, you can never predict Mother Nature. Well, I'm just very surprised. Not a whole lot of wind. Usually this time of the year, out near the Cordelia part of Fairfield, California, it's pretty windy. 
I know us Rodriguez High School graduates, always windy out there. This one's lifted in the shallow center field. That ball's going to get down for a base hit. So Manuel has herself a worn out single. It's going to bring up Yasmin Marino, who's 0 for 1 today with a strikeout looking back in the third inning. Drops down the bunt and it is foul. So the count goes 0 and 1. Solano, one of the best defensive teams in the state of California, with a 927 fielding percentage on the year as a team, and that's good for third in the state of California. You see their batting average of 402, third in the state, and run scored a 264, and that number has gone up since game one. This one's hit. Jasmine Hornsby Edwards, the second to first. Oh, they make sure of the lead runner and they get the out. So good heads up play by Jasmine Hornsby Edwards to get the second out of the inning. Now coming to play is going to be Amy Nichols, who's 0 for 1 day with a strikeout and a walk and a scored run. First pitch, high and outside, ball one. So Selden's really battling out there today, doing an excellent job for the Falcons so far. High and outside, thought about back pick, but not going to throw it down, 2-0. So the 2-0, low in the dirt, runner on the move, throws down, throw is there, and she gets under the tag. She's in there safely. That's stolen base for Yasmin Marino. So head coach for Yuba telling Amy Nichols that she missed a hit and run there, left her runner out high and dry. So 3-0 now the count. Foul right into the home dugout. Count goes to three and one. That was assistant coach Tim Griffith over there with the with the foot save. So now the three and one. This one's lifted high and high in the sky in the center field. Nay White is under it. Makes the grab for out number three. So. Yuba strands one, heading to the bottom of the fourth.
bottom of the fourth inning. The 8 9 1 hitters coming up for the Falcons as they lead 4 to 2. Ashley Dufresne due up first. She was 0 for 0, hit by the pitch in her first at bat. Got her right in the thigh. And she seems to be all right. So Solano's going to need some production here. Just they got to add on every inning. They've got another zero up on the board. Getting later into this game now. You know, they like to tack on a couple more runs, a couple more insurance run, only leading by two. So Haley Gall in her fourth inning of work. Only allowed four runs so far. Scattered four hits, four runs. So having a nice day on the mound. First pitch in there, strike call. The count goes 0-1. It's now the 0-1. Chops and swings at this one. That was way low. Count goes 0-2. So any magic left in your tank over there, Anthony? Any predictions? Um, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> this one's ripped down the third baseline. Fair ball. Dufresne, she's looking for two, and she's on her horse. She's going to be in there with a stand-up double lead off the bottom of the fourth inning. So we're going to have a pinch runner come in for Ashley Dufresne. It's going to be Cassidy Paulo. Cassidy Paulo went 0 for 1, reached on a fielder's choice, scored a run, and had an RBI in the very first game. She actually came on in a very similar situation, came in a pinch run, tagged up on third and scored the run. So Jasmine Hornsby Edwards up at the plate, 1 for 1 in this ball game. 2 for 4 on the day. Drops it down, and, and it's a foul ball. Oh, and she is, that is an out because she, uh, so the umpire is going to come together because she fouled it, hit her bat, did not hit her in the fair play. So the umpire is coming together to make, make sure it's the right. So they're calling her out. She said they hit her outside the, the box. So that's the first out of the inning. So now it brings up Elena Benapai. 0 for 2 today looking for a first hit. And we know she's been hitting hot as of late. This one's hit up in the left field. Could be trouble. Turn around the left fielder. It gets down. Cassidy coming around third. She's going to score with these. Elena Benapayo showing some wheels all the way to third. And that is an RBI triple for Elena Benapayo. Wow, I didn't even see her around second <laughs> base. <laughs> I just seen her at third. <laughs> she was already around second base before Cassidy even hit third base. <laughs> Man, she's fast. Real fast. You know, she wanted that one. She saw uh, Nay White do it all last game. She said, hey, I want a little piece of that action. <laughs> so now with one out, it brings up Christian Montgomery. 0 for 1 in the game with a walk and a strikeout. You know, it's crucial at bat here. With less than one out, you want to make sure you get this run in. <laughs> Looking to drop it down, bunt. She pulls it back. It's a ball. Count goes to 1-0. No. Christian went two for two in that first game, as I said, with a couple of singles, so swinging the bat well. Chops this one foul down the third baseline. Count goes to one and one. Oh, 
So one ball, one strike, one out. Runner on third. Solano leads five to two. Call trying to work out of a jam here. Ha! Ball two. Two one, low in the dirt. Ball three. Now the three one count. You know you're looking for one pitch here. Definitely a hitter's count. Something you can drive into the outfield. Try to get this run home. Try to find a gap. Keep the rally going. If it's not there. Don't swing. She swings at this pitch. Fouls it back. So now the count will be full. So a full count to Christian Montgomery. Runner on third. Goal set now. Rotates, fires. And this was dead ball. It bounced off of her foot. So a good battle here by Christian Montgomery coming up. Fouling off a tough pitch. So another 3-2. Pops this one up. Foul. So this battle just keeps on going. So another 3-2. Who's going to win this one? Swing and a miss. Strike three. So that's the second strike out of the day for Christian Montgomery. Now it's going to bring up Steph Sello. One for one with a walk, a single, and two scored runs. Adding on to her impressive day. Had four RBIs in the first game. Looking for the number five on the day. First one at this ball game. First pitch is low, ball one. So Sella would really like to get a base hit here and add one more on. She hits this one right in the five and a half hole. And she comes through once again. And she's going to take off for two as it scoots away from Nichols. And she's going to stay on second base with a huge two out RBI hit. So Solano now leads six to two with probably the hottest hitter on the field right now, Nay White up at the plate. She had a home run back in the first. She was intentionally walked in the third. She scored two runs today. So let's see if they decide to pitch to her here with two outs. And they do, and this one's hit high in the left center field. Going over is Nichols. Nichols makes the catch for out number three. So Solano gets two more, and we're heading to the top of the fifth.
top of the fifth inning here on the Solano College Sports Network, your home for Solano Sports. Dosh and Moira, Anthony Williams here in the booth where Solano leads 6-2. to two. Anthony, what do you like from Solano so far in this game? Well, they're hitting... They're Hitting actually is unbelievable right now. And they're playing good defense on the other side. Um, the pitcher, number seven, she's having a great game. And I think Solana's going to get the victory. All right. I like that prediction there, partner. <laughs> so the 49ers have the two, three, four hitters coming up, starting with Shane Parrish, who's one for two today's game. She hit a double in her last at bat and scored a run. Followed by Hannah Heitman and Haley Gall, the See three, four hitters, the very good part of this lineup. You know, Cheyenne Parrish comes in back to 317, 427 on base percentage with 349 slugging. Leads the team in scored runs with 16. Leads the team in five stolen bases and also on, her on base percentage. So she gets on a lot. First pitch outside, ball one. Now the count goes to 1-0. Now the count goes 2-0. And, and let's take a little bit of social media break here. And Did you see that the Game of Thrones actually debuted their new season in San Francisco last night, Anthony? Uh, no, I don't really pay attention to the Game of Thrones. Oh, you have never seen the Game of Thrones? No. I actually, my buddy got me hooked on it this week. And, man, that's been run. Oh, this one's ripped down the left field line, but foul. <laughs> Third base coach trying to sell it over there. <laughs> so, hey, speaking of actors over there, see? She's doing a good job, taking a lesson. Count goes 2-1. But I highly recommend you checking out that series. It's one of those, once you start watching it, you can't put it down. It's like Breaking Bad, man. <laughs> okay, I'll have to check it out. Now, I know you have Netflix. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite series on Netflix? Favorite series? Um... Uh... I don't know. I, my friend actually got me into Orange is the New Black. That's pretty so, good, huh? Yeah. Crazy Eyes. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's a pretty good character. Yeah. So the count goes two and two. This one's ripped right to Benepio. A little weird spin. She picks up, throws it over to first for out number one. A man, she showed off the cannon right there. You wouldn't expect that strong of an arm from a girl that's listed at 410 on the stat book over here. Mm, 410. Yeah, last year when I was in, over here with uh, Bella Falafini in the first game, my broadcast partner, she was telling me they had her listed at 5-3 last year. Now this year they had her listed at 4 so giving her a little <laughs> the benefit of the doubt, I believe. So now Hannah Heitman coming up to the plate. One for two today, single, reached on an air. This one's hit right to Jade Bactad. She picks it up, steps on the bag for out number two. Yeah. Did you ever play baseball? I did for most of my life. When I was five years old all the way up until I was 18. Played all over the country with a bunch of great players. Actually, a lot of players that actually played through this, the Solano Falcons program. One of them still does. Bo Grandpa Siegel, first baseman, having himself a nice season. Yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing. Both softball and baseball putting together a pretty impressive run in the Bay Valley Conference this year. This one's chopped right out in front. Jasmine Hornsby enemy on the run, and she makes the play for out number three. So three up, three down, heading to the bottom of the fifth.
Bottom of the fifth inning now. Solano still leads six to two. We have the five, six, seven hitters coming up. So we have a defensive change here for the Yuba 49ers. And it's going to be Morgan Maines coming in behind the dish for Cheyenne Parrish. When Cheyenne actually caught the whole first game and most of this game. So giving her a couple innings off, you know, playing behind the plate. Does take a toll on your knees. Now, did you ever play baseball, Anthony? Yes, I actually did. But I had to stop because I felt bad after I, I hit somebody with a pitch. And, you know, just my, my conscience. Uh -huh. Kind of got to me. Just too nice of a guy over here. <laughs> Anthony Williams, a nice guy in the booth. Now, what you played basketball, didn't you? Yes. Now, what position in basketball did you play? Um, for most of my career in basketball, I played center and power four. And then when I got to the eighth grade, I started playing small four. So, so when we get out on the court, man, you uh, know, I used to play a little point guard back in my day. <laughs> Uh, any time. I welcome any <laughs> challenges at any time. Hey. Just let me know, you know. Hey, I'm not saying one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not really a scorer, man. I like <laughs> to pass the ball. I'm like Steve Nash out there besides the scoring part. <laughs> More like John Stockton. There we go. Pick and roll. Him and the mailman. Yeah, I, I, could, I could do that. Hey, I got some John Stockton shorts I like to wear too, man. <laughs> Everybody likes to hate, but when you're getting, you know, you're getting passed around left and right playing good defense, the shorts come in handy, dude. I'm too big for those shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia Selden up at the plate. First pitch to her is a ball. So Solano leading by four in the fifth inning now. Let's see if they can tack on some more runs right here. As we saw, they had the eight-run rule in effect in the first game. The final score of that game was 11-3. to three. This one's hit. Right to Bond. Bond scoops it up, throws it over to first route number one. Bond doing a good job over at third base today. Just playing the hot corner. Now it's going to be Brittany Jacobson who came through with a clutch double back in the third inning for two RBIs. Ball bounced way in front of the plate. Ball one. And outfield is playing deep. Center field is all the way back at the wall. High and outside, ball two. So Haley Gall still out there in the fifth inning of work now. And right when we were saying it was a nice day, Anthony, the wind's starting to kick up now, a little bit of a wind chill. <laughs> May have to scoot closer to me over here. Keep me warm. No, I'm okay. <laughs> this one's ripped out in the left field, and it's fielded by Nichols. And Brittany Jacobson stays hot, has her second hit of the ball game. I think Haley Gold is starting to get a little tired now. Yeah, this is the point of the game. She's thrown a lot of pitches. Yeah. Fatigue starts to set in a little bit. Now Jade Backtag coming up. She grounded out to the second baseman in her last at-bat. So one on, one out. First pitch back to Tad. Way outside, ball one. Jacobson does have six stolen bases on the year, has not been thrown out once. And you know, with Morgan Maines, a new catcher coming in, you may want to test the arm. Up by four. High, ball two. So now the 1-1. One, one. This one's poked out in the center field. And Marino makes the grab. Oh. But she did. She lost it on the transfer, so it was an out. Good call by the umpire there to recognize that. Those are always a little tough call to make. Terry Pearson Bloom. Getting a definition. 
Yeah, she likes to get down to the point. Mm -hmm. She needs every detail in the world. But that's a good coach right there. Very good coach. Had her 400th victory earlier in the season. I mean, since she's been here, I mean, they've won the PDC Conference every year. <laughs> Ten times they've won it for every year from 06 to up to last year, looking like they're on their way to number 11. So Ashley Dufresne up. First pitch of hers outside. Dufresne knocked in a – had a double back in the fourth inning and scored off of Ben Pyle's triple. And she roped that one down the third base line. So one for one today. Swings at this one, fouls, a back count goes to one and one. It's pretty interesting to see this Yuba team. Every one of them has those quarterback sleeves, you know, with the plays in it. Mm -hmm. And the coach is yelling out different, like, blue 15 and things like that. So it really sets up different part, parts of the game. Runner on the move, lifted into high, right center field. And that ball all oh, bounces off the fence. Dufresne keeps going. Jacobson comes in. And that is another RBI double for Ashley Dufresne. Wow, Jacobson's kind of fast, too. <laughs> Man, she hit it right out into that jet stream, but it just came down. It hit about three quarters up on that fence. <laughs> How mad would you be if you hit it that far and it hits the top of the fence? Man, very mad. So now it brings up Jasmine Hornsby Edwards, one for two today with a single and that bunt that hit off her out front of the box. First pitcher here is a ball. So Solano now leads seven to two. This one's chopped down third baseline. Foul. So now 1-1 one, one to count to Jas Jasmine Hornsby Edwards. Man, I'm starting to butcher her name now. I've been good all day. You know, hey, fatigue does set in for the broadcasters as well. Yes. This one's chopped. Heitman throws it over to first and just gets to Speedy Hornsby Edwards for out number three. Solano gets one, leading 7-2, to going to the top of the sixth. Denali Smith, freshman pitcher. Thanks for watching Solano College Sports Network. And we're back here in the top of the sixth inning here on the Solano College Sports Network. You can see a good shot there of the amazing Solano College coaching staff headed by Coach Terry Pearson Blue. So we have a defensive substitution here for the Falcons. And Ashley Dufresne checks back into the game. She will be the DP for Cassidy Paulo. Coming up this inning for the Yuba 49ers is Kelsey Smith, Danielle Ferrari, and Elizabeth Bond. 
Smith can't, comes up to the plate. Oh, for one today, had a sacrifice bunt back in the second. This one's popped up in the left center field. Going back is White. White makes the running catch for out number one. Now it brings up Danielle Ferrari. Oh, for two today. I think she has the best last name of the bunch. <laughs> yes, I like her last name. Now, what's your favorite type of Ferrari, Anthony? Um, I don't know. They're all nice to me. This thing's popped up near the home dugout. And, oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Jasmine Hornsby Edwards, she heard it hit the top and just hit the deck. Uh, I, I don't blame her. <laughs> and everybody's having a good laugh now. Another SCSN, not top 10 plays. <laughs> So that's, that's that's one there, and one from a couple games ago in Alaska. Oh, yeah. Denali we're... Smith was on the mound, dropped the ball. Yeah. She picked it up, then just Straight fell right down. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's 0-1 to Ferrari. My favorite Ferrari has to be the 62 F-250. Strike in there, call count goes 0-2, and, and it just happened to sell for a cool $56 million. That's it. Hey. <laughs> you know, not too expensive, so. Yeah, that's actually the same car that was in the famous movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the one they wreck, trying to roll back the miles, which wasn't a smart move on their part whatsoever. The only way you can do that, you know, you got to go in with, with, with the power drill and try to do it back, but that's also illegal. You didn't hear that from me. <laughs> so 0-2 oh, to count to Danielle Ferrari. This one's poked. Benepayo makes the grab for out number two. What a snag by Benepayo. She was shading towards the five and a half hole, towards third base, and just goes to her left and just reaches out. I think I think that was her at full extension right there, Anthony. Hey. What position did you play in baseball? I played just about every position. I was also a closer, so I came in the last inning and pitched. But usually by the end of my career, I was playing first and third primarily. And pitching a lot. Yeah, that was a good first base, man. This one's hit. Jasmine Hornsby Edwards steps, makes the throw for out number three. So three up, three down, heading to the bottom of the sixth. Jasmine Hornsby Edwards, sophomore, third base. Thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. Hi, my name is Brittany Jacobson. I'm a sophomore. I'm a utility player, and thank you for watching Solano College Sports Network. Bam. So bottom of the six, Solano leading seven to two with the top of the lineup coming up, and Uptown is funking you up over here, huh, Anthony? <laughs> the great song about Bruno Mars. I see the fans dancing here, and they should be. Solano won the first game, 11 to three. Now they're on the cusp, 11 to 11, seven to two right now with the Benapio coming up. Benepio one for three in this ball game. She ripped a triple, an RBI triple in her last at bat. Showing off the wheels. That's what happens when you run hard out of the box. You can extend it. Oh, 
That ball's outside. Count goes one. Nope. So here's a question for you, Anthony. What is the greatest sports movie of all time? The greatest sports movie of all time. Hmm. Let's see. There's a lot of great sport movies. I mean, you have you have Rocky. Well, you, mean, you can pick your Rocky there. You know, remember the Titans? Yeah. I would have to say remember the Titans. Denzel Washington did a great job. What about he he, he got game? Hey. With Ray Allen, Denzel. Count goes 3 and 0 to better pile. Yeah, that's true, but you know, too many people would probably say he got game. I want to switch it up a little bit. I mean, you got Miracle, Mi Miracle on Ice. <laughs> what? The when the Russians the uh, United States upset at Russia. And was that was that the that's ball 4 to better pile with a lead off walk. Was that the 83 Olympics? 80 Olympics. Thank you, Professor Greg Poff. You know, he's a the jacks of all trade over here. <laughs> <laughs> so here comes a time from the he was head coach. You know, the, well, I'd have to go with my favorite movie over here. There's two of them. I have to, but 61 asterisks about the home run race between Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris. Not a lot of people have seen that. Directed by Billy Crystal. Great movie. Mm -hmm. Very, you know, Thomas Jane, Barry Pepper did an excellent performance. But by far, Bull Durham. Can't go wrong with Bull Durham. Have you ever seen Bull Durham? No, I don't think with, I have. With Kevin Costner? Nah, I don't think I have. Grab some pine meat? And they call it meat? No? Nah. <laughs> well, you definitely have to check that one out. Now, here, here's another question for you. Which sports story should be made into a movie? Sports story as in, like, this year? like Of, like, of all time, that has recent. not been made into a movie. Um... Oh no, that's a hard one. Uh, I have to. You have to come <laughs> back with that one. I have to think about that one. You know, one that jumps off the top of my head. They made a thirty for thirty about it already. Survive in advance, thirty for thirty. I don't know if you've seen that about the nineteen eighty three North Carolina State under Coach Jim Valvano. Uh, yeah, I've heard about it, but I didn't get the chance to watch it. Oh, great. 30 for 30. I think that's the next one that be, needs to be made into a movie. So we have... You know position changes to? One spot. Number two is going to right field. One spot. Going to nine. Four spot is going to seven. Four spot. Four spot. Four spot in the order. Whoa. This is number 21. 21's going to go by. Uh, no, hold on. Let me see. I'm going to give you two's going to not. Two's going to right field. Mm -hmm. Seven's going to left field. Mm -hmm. 21's going to second base. Okay. Thank you, Blue. He just gave me the whole lineup change here. So, Danielle Ferrari's coming into second base. Haley Gall's going out to left. And Amy Nichols is going to slide over to right field in 22-0. Oh, so 22 is a new pitcher, Jocelyn Akala. We saw her in the first game where she just threw one-third of an inning, and then the game was over to the, that eight-run rule. So did you happen to check out the 30-for-30 uh, 30 30 that came out last week about I Hate Christian Leitner? I haven't seen it yet. But I will definitely watch it when I get home. It's a pretty good one. You know, I am a Duke fan, mm -hmm. but I still hate Christian. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The guy was just so good, though. That's why everybody hated him. And he's probably one of the greatest college basketball players to ever grace the game. I mean, the guy played all four years, won two national championships for Coach, C Coach K. Mm -hmm. And he was the only college player on the Dream Team. Yep. He never played a minute, though. <laughs> So now here we go. Nobody, one person on. Lena Benapal swings. No, oh, she runs down to second. And that is a swinging strike by Christian Montgomery, and Benapal has herself a stolen base. You want to know what my favorite 30 for 30 is? Has been um, the bad boy. The oh yeah, the, the fat five or the bad boys with Isaiah Thomas bunt right out yes. front of the plate. It's a foul ball. Yes, with Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars, Dennis Rodman. It was a great story to me. Um, it, it interested me a lot because I already knew a lot about it, but 
just to go into more details about the story actually mm -hmm. made it even better. See, you have sports stories you can turn into a movie. There's one of them right there. <laughs> How about the Fab Five? Yes, that was a great 30 for 32. Balls low. Count goes with one and two. I mean, somebody, they do an excellent job with all those three. I mean, you don't know Bo? That was one of my all-time favorites, Bo Jackson. Yes. yes. Shout out to the Raiders. Count goes two and two inside. And you know, if Bo Jackson didn't sustain that injury, I think he could have been a Hall of Famer in two sports. First person to ever do that. Yes, he, he definitely could have. He was one of the most athletic um, athletes in the world. This one's hit right back at Akala. She scoops it up, throws it to third, and she is safe at third. Ben Apio showing off the wheels once again. She's too fast. <laughs> Speed kills. So now it's going to bring up the hot hitting Steph Cello. Two for two today. Two scored runs and a walk. Couple of singles. With no outs here. Runners on the corners. She's a good chance to add to her RBI total on the year. First pitch to Cello almost comes in and hits her, but it just scrapes down in the zone. So the count goes 1-0. And, oh. and that pitch, Christian Montgomery took off and stole back. Oh, this one's hit high, deep in the left field. Going back is Gall. And that baby's gone. Three-run home run for Steph Cello. And she comes through big in the clutch once again. And this ball game is over, folks. Walk off home run for Steph Sello. Have yourself a day. So final score here at Solano Community College. Game two, 10 to two. And what a hit by Steph Sello right there. Hey, she got the right pitch. Perfect, perfect timing, right? It was just everything, everything was right. <laughs> Hi everybody, Greg Poff here in the Solano College Sports Network Studios to tell you about a great opportunity here at Solano where we're the only community college in the nation to have our own sports broadcasting program. So if you're interested in a career in sports broadcasting, Solano Community College is the place for you. And we offer students training in all aspects of sports broadcasting, whether it's behind the microphone, behind the camera, or learning to operate our state-of-the-art production equipment in our newly renovated television studio, or out in the field covering an actual live sports event for Solano Community College. At SCC, our sports broadcasting program is responsible for providing broadcasts of Solano sports teams and creating sports shows to be telecast on Fairfield's cable access channel 28 as well as webcasts on our YouTube station at Solano College Sports Network. So if you're interested in taking one of our sports broadcasting courses, you will find them listed under Communication Studies in the SCC schedule of classes each and every semester. So come on over, check us out in our TV studio in room 121 on the main campus where here at Solano Community College, it's more than just sports, it's an education. Cross court to Audrey Jones. Audrey for three. And it's good! With 1.3 seconds left on the game clock, Audrey Jones with one of the biggest shots of the season.